Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at FilmmakerU.com or, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Filmmaker underscore U. This week, I'm joined by colorist Vincent Taylor, whose work includes Tiger King, uh, How to Talk to Austra uh, Australians, Little Nas, Little Nas X's Panini music video, and much, much more. Welcome to the show, Vincent. Oh, man, thank you. Thanks for having me. So I guess my, my, my first question is, you've got this range of like com tons of commercial work all the way over to music videos and television shows. Um, is there a particular area that you prefer to work in or is there is it pretty much anything? Um, it's 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 pretty much anything I uh, when I was still working in Australia I, I had this lovely balance between drama and short form you know and I, I love the minutiae of commercials I love that kind of finite um, sculpting that you can get into mm -hmm. um, but then also I, I was kind of brought up on drama and and that's kind of what I do as a as a as a backdrop anyway especially from my um DP background mm -hmm. um but it's interesting because because it, I, I've noticed I've only been in the U.S. for maybe four years or so and I've noticed that you can get pigeonholed if you're not mm -hmm. you're not careful um that's a very long answer to your question, but uh, 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 yeah, I, I, I mean, I like both. Yeah. Uh, for me, the bottom line is, is storytelling and that can be a 30 second commercial. You know, you, yeah. can, you can craft a story out of that or it can be obviously a, a feature film. So as long as there's a story in there, I'm pretty happy. Do you find that commercials like explore or push the boundaries of uh, color correction more? Or I mean, like the music videos definitely do it looks yeah like. yeah music videos absolutely do commercials uh i would say uh probably i'm gonna pick a number 70 percent more conservative in a way oh, okay uh because uh, only because uh, you know you'll get a lot of people who will come in and go make it look like this commercial or make it look like as opposed to going where can we go with this yeah now the reason it's 70 percent not the 400 percent is is of course then you've got your people who are going let's see what we can do yeah. let's see where we can take this and then and then that's when you start to really stretch the envelope a little bit and it does get in more into a music video territory mm -hmm. um so yeah now what what is like because you said you had a cinematography background so you were a cinematographer originally how did you make that transition to colorist um i so I went to a film school in Australia mm -hmm. uh, and it was a kind of a directing, writing uh, uh, film school. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in my kind of third year, it was a three year uh, graduate course. And in my third year, I went, you know what? I'm, I'm not a director and I'm certainly not a writer. And it, and it was there that I kind of discovered my love for the image. And so I, I majored in cinematography that year mm -hmm. and then spent the next six years shooting shooting music videos uh, uh commercials um dramas um and i loved it just adored lighting and i still love lighting that's where my photography i i that's my outlet photography but um but then i'd had a i'd had a rough year and so i had a complete break i went that's it that's it i'm stepping out of this and uh managed a bar for a year okay. and then uh and then a friend of mine uh said hey look you know we're shooting this film we'd love you to shoot it and i said oh, i don't know i'm not sure and they said oh come on these people are working on it you'll love it and I, all right and i did it was it was great anyway i, I took that in for the, this is back in film days telecine mm -hmm. took it in for telecine uh and then the post house said where have you been you disappeared and i went well i, I don't know I've been a bit lost you know and then they reached out to me um a little while later said look would you be interested in in coming through telecine and, and mm -hmm. color grading, uh, especially coming from a, a lighting background? We've never done that before. And I said, oh, all right, let's let's give it a go. And I loved it. I loved it because you're still manipulating light. 
and color and, and, and you know, and still storytelling. Uh, and, and then DPs and directors loved it because I've been on set and I kind of had that background. Mm -hmm. um, and I pretty much didn't look back. I, I just, you know, that was 20 years ago or something like that. So, yeah. Um, you know, um, you have to indulge me here. Uh, do you miss the bar or are you like, oh, I'm glad I'm out of that? <laughs> well, luckily I still get to go to a bar. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I just happen to be on the other side now. You know, it's like, uh, I'll tell you what I don't miss because back in those days, uh, everyone smoked in bars. So you'd oh, be at wow. the bar and people would just be blowing smoke in your face. So I certainly don't miss that. <laughs> I, yeah, one of my first jobs when I was a teenager was at a place and it was just filled with smoke it was oh, like that man. blue haze and you're just like this can't be yeah. good <laughs> yeah. and you'd get up the next morning your clothes but ah, oh, yeah it's yeah. like so no i i um yeah it, it i think i think though it's interesting because even working at a bar the element that i did like about it is i you know i love communicating i love talking i love meeting people and and it definitely ticked that box and that's yeah. something even as a colorist you get that all the time and yeah. and and that's been tough with with the pandemic, you know, because you're doing a lot more kind of remote grades and things like that. But um, yeah. Now, what what would you say your style of photography is then? Because you said that's your outlet. Uh, I think I think it would definitely be street photography okay. um, uh, every time. Uh, and again, the that flavor of people, you know, yeah. just uh, people. And, um, uh, and then of course the last nine years, it's also been kids because of my kids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, street photography. And, and I mean, I was working in Shanghai for, for three years and no matter where you pointed the camera, it was, there was something awesome to look at. And, um, and same with New York, you know, living in New York, uh, you just, you know, I know sometimes my wife would say, we gotta go we're trying to get to over there and i'm going yeah yeah but i just want to um uh i love it i love it so much and it's it's a meditation for me you know it's it's mm -hmm. it's yeah it's something i've always loved and always will do so is there a street photographer that you turn to for inspiration when you're working um not 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 specifically no i i uh in in fact if anything i i, I just have a couple of friends that i you know, we kind of bounce off each other, but there's no, there's no one professionally that I kind of go, oh, that's who I gravitate to. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing it for, for me. I'm just kind of doing it because I love it so much. So now when you start a project, how do you like to approach uh, getting yourself ready for that project, getting on the same page as the uh, director? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, it, the first one will just be a quick, quick, some quick research just to see who I'm, if I haven't worked with this person before, just kind of see what they've done before, uh, what their style is, if they have a style, you know, because a lot of people have a, a lot of different looks that they go for, just to start to get a glimpse into their headspace. Yeah. Um, that would definitely be my first point. Um, and then the second, again, whether it's commercial, or whether it's uh, something else, is just to have a look through the storyboards and, and kind of get a sense uh, or, or read the script, um, get a sense of what it is that I'm jumping into and then have a chat. What is it? So, you know, I've talked to various colorists and, you know, some of them very much like being able to, you know, mat things out and really use uh, boxes to sort of highlight things and others want to get the initial sort of almost like you're back in the telecine day doing a pass. How do you approach that? How do you like to work with the image? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would definitely be the latter. And, and, I, and I, think you, I think you nailed it. It probably comes back to my training where I started. I, I also think that for me, in any way, if, if I get into those specifics too early, then I'm, I'm locked in, you know? Um, I always, I, I love to use the phrase, a sketch. You know, let's let's just sketch the grade up first. Let's not get into doing the detail of the eyes and things like that. Let's just get that sketch, and then you, and, and then you can play it through. Because at the end of the day, you're not dealing with a specific shot or a, a still image. You you you're dealing with moving pictures, and 
one shot feeds another shot. So you want to just see how they play together. Then once you've got that base in place, then you can really start, you know, shaping it and sculpting it. How do you tackle? Cause it's like one of the things we've seen is like schedules are getting tighter and tighter. So how do you tackle, you know, still maintaining your high quality of work and meeting this tight schedule? It's hard, man. It's hard. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's changed so much because you've not only got that tighter schedule, you've also got a much larger tool set than you used to have. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it used to be the day where you'd, you'd lace up a roll of film. Uh, you had a, as far as windows and shapes, you'd have a circle and a rectangle. And in some regards, that was great because it forced that creative process into a very limited tool set. Now, I mean, gosh, there's, there's so much you can do. And, and, you know, you'll be in a session and someone's saying, oh, actually, can you just paint that out? Or can you just, and you're going, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> um, it's really, it's challenging. But, you know, this actually feeds back into your previous question. You know, if you've got that broad um, palette in place, and depending on how that clock's ticking, worst case, then you've got the base down. And then you go, great, we've got another two hours. What are we going to focus on here? What's our priority for the story? You know, um, is it that is it that person's tie? Because that's what, you know, is really comes through the theme of the story. Is it the fact that, you know, we really don't want to see the other characters so much? And, you know, so, so and, I, and I'll start to sound repetitive because again and again and again, it'll come back to story. What's motivating those color decisions? what would you say you know is there a particular scene in your career that was particularly tough to do but you're most proud of the uh or pretty proud of the outcome of it it's it's funny because some of the stuff that you kind of go i got it i got it i nailed that is not necessarily the most beautiful or amazing stuff it's the fact that you kind of turned it around for more <laughs> yeah so so it's 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 there's stuff that I'm really proud of that I've done that I've gone, wow, that works now. Would I put it on my show reel? No, no, but I'm, <laughs> but, but I, but I, but I got something out of that image that wasn't there. I remember uh, this is years ago, I was working on a, a documentary film and the producer uh, said to me, Oh, I, I shot in the scene. I, I, I was actually one of the people on the camera and look, I had no idea what I was doing. Please, can you just try and, you know, uh, and she was right. It was pretty challenging. Um, and I worked it, it worked it, it worked it. And I got the two cameras to match pretty bloody good. You know, it, 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 I was really proud of it, you know. Unfortunately, her reaction to that was, that's amazing. I don't need to get a professional DP. This is so cool. And I'm going, no, 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 that's not the, that's not the goal here um yeah so uh yeah so there's stuff that i'm definitely proud of, of of what i've achieved to help tell that story but it's not always going to be the yeah it's, that's the most beautiful it's so funny that you would say that because a couple of editors i've talked to have said almost identical <laughs> where it's like it's the stuff i'll never show anyone but yeah. i know i yeah. saved it <laughs> yeah and it's you know and uh um i mean that is that is part of the job you know, um, uh, the job, it's, it's like these different tiers, you know, it, it's like the first job of, of a colorist. And, and I get amazed at how often this gets forgotten. The first job of a colorist is ultimately continuity. You know, we, we want the story to flow. So as a viewer, you're not being pulled out of that. Um, uh, now at a high level, high level production or there's a budget where they've had the time to light the time to do it properly then your job changes because the 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 job of getting things to match isn't nearly as challenging so you can put that time instead into you know putting that layer of icing on the top that really just takes it across the line mm -hmm. um yeah now do you also find part of your job to be like essentially armchair psychiatrist for the cinematographer or the director talking them off the ledge if they're worried about something let me answer that diplomatically <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah sure sure you know and and that um 
again, the job of a colorist, there's, there's so many little boxes to tick. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and working with uh, people and whether that is the extreme of, you know, massaging an ego, which isn't, doesn't happen that often, to be honest, you know, um, or I had this just uh, last week, this week, where someone went, oh, look, you know, I don't really know how to describe color. And I'm going, well, don't worry about it. That's not your job. You know, you just tell me what you think. It's my job to get it out of your brain, you know? So, and so putting people at ease so then they can do their job. That's the, you know, that's the key because then at the end of the day, we all want that project to look the best it can look, you know? And, um, and if I get, if I get that, that moment in the room, where someone says that's it oh my gosh that's the look you know and and that job the other day they went that's those are the skies that i was trying to articulate and i you got it you got it and you know it's so satisfying it's really really satisfying so how do you get it out of their their brain if uh if they're having trouble <clears throat> any techniques or tricks yeah yeah it's a really really good one and, and you can use this technique for everything in daily life uh listen just listen just really listen to them and um uh, and that's not just, and, and, oh, now this is something interesting with the pandemic, that listening skill is, is not just words coming out of their mouth. It's, it's, it's their body language, the way that they are trying to say something or the way that they're struggling to, to find something. And sometimes with the zoom call, if you're doing a remote grade, you know, that's a little harder to pick up on especially if you've got a, a few people on that zoom call and someone's typing in the background and it's like, you know, um, you just have to listen harder. Now, yeah. how, what would you, you know, for, there's a lot of young uh, colorists who watch this. So like, what would you recommend for those young colorists who are just getting started? Um, here's a good tip. This is, this is, this is a great tip. I think, um, what uh find a film that you love um or a tv show or, or whatever and and ch choose a scene uh turn the sound down and just watch the scene you know and and look again that that priority is your continuity you know what makes those shots match or not match you know there's a lot of stuff out there and the things don't match and just just watch that for a bit um that can teach you so much. Uh, another tip that I got given really, really early on, which uh, I use to this day, um, go outside, you know, go outside, go to a park, you know, this sounds so airy fairy, but, but look at a tree, see how many different color hues or different hues of green you can see in that tree. Nature's your best teacher. You know, look at that sky with someone in the foreground. How, how much is it clipping compared to them? And, you know, um, yeah, that, 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 that's something that I, I do today. I mean, probably because of my photography as well, but mm -hmm. always just look around you and, and, and see what, you know, even just looking at you now, I can see a little bit of green off to your right and I can mm -hmm. see you, know, you start to notice that. Uh, one, of the, one of the best subjects i did at school and it was accidental actually because I, I was trying to get into this arts class and i didn't get in and they said to me uh they said well there's, there's art history you know you could do this art history elective and i went all right you know best thing i could have done you know to, to break down an image and to and to look at an image and and see what works about that with a you know it's the composition the color the lack of color mm -hmm. you know so um, I suppose I suppose what I'm saying as well to those people coming up is question. Just always question, even yourself. If you look at something and you go, uh, oh yeah, I like that, that's awesome. Why do you like it? What is it about that you like? Or, or what don't you like about it? And that can teach you so much. Now you mentioned earlier, you know, talking to, you know, Zoom calls with multiple people. How do you make sure that when you're showing people stuff because of the pandemic, we're no longer in the same rooms. How do you make sure that their stuff is calibrated and is looking exactly the same as yours? Oh, 
Yeah, that's 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 again, that's a fantastic question, and it's uh, you know, this I mean, this was happening pre-pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when when sometimes uh, you might have the direct DP in the room, but then they had to send it off to somebody else to look at, and there was you know, you were still going, what are they? They were going, oh, it's far too dark, and then you go, well, hang on, what are you looking at? Um, I I mean, I'm a little bit lucky because I've you know, I've got color scientists here uh, at Harbor and and uh, I've got very, very smart people to, to send out iPads that are calibrated and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's still a few basic things you can do. Um, uh, these days, luckily enough, a lot of the um, laptops and even these phones, you know, they're calibrated pretty well and they look pretty good. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can uh, find an image that you know pretty well or a TV show that you really know really well and look at it on that monitor. I mean, this is this is getting back to basic basics, you yeah, know, yeah. before you can send it. Just look at it and, and go, oh, yeah, that kind of looks what I remember. Like, you know, and, and if it's way off, then you know you've got an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you could also request uh, from your colorist um, like to get like a color chart or like a grayscale, and very simply, does black look like black? Mm -hmm. Does white look like white? If black looks kind of gray, your monitor is probably too bright. You know, if white has a little bit of pink in it, you know, it might you might not be able to correct that so easily on your laptop, but you've got to at least take that into account. Mm -hmm. um, also, at the end of the day you know, it's going to give you a guide, you know, a little guide and you go, well, it kind of looks right. And you've got to trust your colorist as well. You know, if they're saying, if you're saying those highlights look really, really pink. And if the colorist is going, they look pretty good here, man. You know, it's just, yeah. then you've got it. You've got to kind of uh, balance that out a little bit with, with what you're looking at and realize what you're looking at might not be quite right. But this <clears throat> this topic of what you're looking at is it's an age old issue mm. and challenge. You know, I, I, I had a, this was a commercial grade when I was working in China and the, the agency didn't want to come into the room. They said, no, 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 you grade it with the director, export it. And then we'll watch it on our computers in the kitchen. <laughs> Literally they were sitting out in the kitchen because they're going, that's how everyone's going to see it. That's how we want to see. We don't want to, you know, it was a long day yeah. because it was like, back and forth, you know, you, you, you've got to have a standard somewhere that you trust. And then you, you logically, you know, that everyone's monitors are going to be slightly different. Mm -hmm. So now I have one last question for you. You know, we've been stuck in this pandemic and depending where you are in the world, you're probably, you might be stuck inside right now with Omicron. In that time, a lot of people have turned to streaming networks for entertainment. Yes. Is there something you've discovered over the last year? that you know movie or show that people need to check out my my guilty pleasure um i my my favorite thing that i got this was last year and it's just kicked off for a third season i think uh was the cobra kai series oh the yes. yeah man i just and and i and i say it's guilty pleasure because i i, I can't watch it with my wife and she's going oh, really come on so it'll be nighttime kids are in bed and i'll put that on and it's just it, it 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 for me it just captures so much stuff from that first movie yeah um and it's fun it's yeah. just fun and it's still, I, I don't think it's taking itself too seriously um so that's definitely my guilty pleasure number one guilty pleasure number two because i've just moved to la uh and it's something that passed me by unbelievably is curb your enthusiasm oh wow yeah that's yeah yeah so i'm now up to season three shipping my way through that and 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 squirming and yeah. watching larry david just going oh man you know. you'll have to you'll have to uh google i think it's like larry david ticket gets stuck or something like that because someone was in a parking garage and he was trying to exit and the machine ate his ticket and he's like it's it's literally a scene from Curb Your Enthusiasm because he's like, oh. it took my ticket. <laughs> oh yeah, it's 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 it reminds me. It reminds me of uh, I don't know if you saw it, classic British comedy, Faulty Towers. Oh yeah, yeah. Same thing. You know, I'm watching it like this, just going, 
stop lying basil just tell the truth you know it's like yeah wow. well thank you so much for letting me interview today yeah man and uh that's it for this week make sure to check out filmmakeru.com for all our latest courses and of course follow us on twitter at filmmaker underscore you today's episode of filmmaker you is brought to you by our sponsors owc go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs and it's also brought to you by our other sponsors aja make sure to check out aja.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs.